Meet Mao, who just under a year ago was stuck working an engineering job that he hated in a cubicle seriously regretting his choice of major. Flash forward to six months later, Mao was able to drop his job and replace his full-time income with copywriting, only working three hours a day, all while vacationing around Colombia, Mexico, and Hawaii. He can now fill his day with whatever he wants to do, like traveling, working out, and making music with his brother. Today, Mao is going to share his experience as a freelance copywriter, living the laptop lifestyle, and hopefully inspire you in the process. Let's check it out. What's up, what's up, dude? Uh, I'm really stoked for this one because I think that you, I mean, people are gonna see, but like you live a cool fucking life and you're crushing it with copywriting right now. And, um, and you're doing things in a different way. Oh yeah. And like, I really want people to know that this is like a thing. So like, I mean, before we get into the nitty gritty, like, do you want to give us an update of like where you've been the last six months? Yeah. So the past month I've been back in Austin, which is like where I was living, um, before I started copywriting really, but yeah, I mean, okay. I'll just like start kind of like how I even got into this. Cause basically like almost exactly a year ago, like literally November last year, I was working at an engineering job and cause like I went to school for engineering and dude, I just like hated my life for like every single morning I'd have to wake up and like, just go clock in, be sitting at my cubicle. Like it just sucked. And I was like, I need to get, I need to get out of this. And I had tried Facebook ad agency before. Um, and like, it kind of worked, but we were just outsourcing all the work. Uh, so like we had clients, me and my brother, and they eventually just fell off because like the results were just not that good. And like we didn't know how to do marketing or copywriting. And I always thought copywriting was just like something you just kind of like hired somebody to do. And, like didn't actually do yourself. So. But then anyways, I was working my job and I was like, this really sucks. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna be a writer. And I had the idea that I wanted to go to Colombia to live in Medellin. I was just like, dude, I wanna go live in Medellin. Like I have to do this. So I was just figuring out like whatever way I could do it. I was like, I'm gonna start writing. And that's when I got into writing. And then, yeah, and then one thing led to another and I was like, wait, I can just learn how to be a copywriter and like learn how to actually sell things and just work for people, get paid. And then I can travel. So like, that was like my whole thing. Like I just wanted to travel, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I basically did that. I quit my job. I got like my first client pretty quickly. And then I spent all year living in Colombia. I was living there for three months. And then I went to Mexico. I was living there total for like five months, but I was hopping around different places in Mexico. Lived by the beach for like two months. Then I lived in Oaxaca City. Was fucking dope. Just so many different places. I every weekend I was just like doing different like excursions and shit. And then, and during the week I was just working, which is cool, and like meeting people. And yeah, that was basically it. And then I ended it off in I was in Chapas, which is like close to Guatemala. I was gonna go to Guatemala after, but then I ended up sending it to Hawaii, which is super cool and random. But that was basically where I ended off my uh, my my nomadic adventures and now I, I came back because my stepbrother got married and I'm gonna just spend time with the fam but uh the plan is in January to uh to get back out there start traveling again nice yeah. man and like I was beginning like you you've like sort of done what I recommend how old you're 23 right no I'm 26 26 yeah I'm old as fuck bro you look good for your age man Thank you for my age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, um, but like, dude, you, you've kind of done, you've kind of done like what I would love for everybody in their twenties to do, which is like, kind of just fuck off a yeah. little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like go and like explore and just like have some sort of vehicle where you can still make money, but still have a ton of time. Yeah. And what you were telling me, was, so you're, you're, you're at around what you were making as an engineer. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. It's, it's working fucking 50 hours a week. You're working what, like 10? Yeah. Like I do a little bit more because if I'm not doing direct client work, I'm like, you know, figuring out shit, trying to like make some other moves and stuff. Uh, the, you know, there, there's always things you can be doing, which is also like the other side of the entrepreneurs. Like you have that voice that's like, you should, like there's always things you can be doing. But yeah, like client work is like, three or four hours tops a day, you know, three or four hours a day. Yeah. 
if that. I mean, that's solid, yeah. bro. It's a part time. Yeah, bro. literally. And it's on the week and shit. Like, I, right now is like kind of a busy time, like filming this in like the middle of fucking cube. Yeah. And so, like, Clyde wanting to do more stuff, but yeah. dude, like January. Yeah. It'll, yeah. So, so what do you have right now monthly from just being? Yeah. So I hit 7,500 this month, which, like I was saying, like, it feels so small compared to like what I see people doing and just like being surrounded in this space, your perception of money and like your, your, uh, like your frame of, of reference just gets like so elevated where I'm like, bro, this like ain't shit. Like I know I can be making way more. Um, but it, when I really think about it, I'm like, I'm making just as much, if not a little bit more than what I was making at my engineering job, which I went to school for like four and a half years. And I did this in one year, like less than a year. I'm, I'm at 11 months right now of like deciding that I wanted to be a copywriter. Like literally 11 months ago, I didn't even have the idea of copywriting yet. It wasn't until the end of November where I quit my job and I was like, yo, I'm just going to be a copywriter. So you actually acted pretty quick. Yeah. Like you, so you kind of had the idea and then you're like, all right, let's just I had it. the idea. Um, I said, what? Well, so I was gonna say. I was gonna say. What kind of what kind of made you want to look for a new path? Like, what was it about your job where you're like, "Fuck this guy, I just want." I mean, know. honestly, bro, I've always felt like. I think it's just in some people naturally like. Following rules, like following like what society wants of you, just like was never it for me. Like before, I was doing copywriting. I was working in engineer, and my dream. And like, it still is like a a life dream, but it's not like, oh, I needed to make this happen at no matter what now was it's music. Like I love making music. I love uh, house, house music. I make house music, uh, techno and DJ and stuff. So like me and my brother were growing our, our music brand. And like, it was like working engineering during the day and at night, like making music, like working on the dream. Right. But then I just realized like, even a lot of the DJs and like producers I like that make badass music. Like, they're not making that much money. And if they are, they're just, like, constantly touring. And, like, say shows go out, like, during COVID or something, they're not making any money. So I was like, dude, like, I want to make money. You know what I mean? So started doing, like I said, during COVID, I started the Facebook ad agency and with my brother. And that actually had some traction. Like, we signed a few clients, which is crazy. We're like, dude, we're actually making money. And then, like I said, that fell off. And then I ran out of money. So I went back to my job. And then the whole time I was like, Cause I was like the most I'd ever made was 80 K here. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll take this job. It kind of just fell into my lap. And then, but dude, once I got in there like a month in, I was like, I can't fucking do this. And then that whole time I was just like, I needed to start an agency or like, I don't know what to do. And the most logical thing was like, I just need to learn how to market and copyright and sell things on my own. And then eventually if I want to like start outsourcing stuff, then I can, but like, at least I know how to do it. That was like my thought process. Mm-hmm. And so, and you, you hopped in Inner Circle. It was uh, it was either end of May or early June, right? Yeah, it was when I was in uh, in Puerto Escondido in Mexico. Yeah. Mao's story resonates with you so far, and you want to make a full time income doing part time work just like him. I might have something for you. I have dozens of students in my inner circle just like Mao who are making anywhere between five to ten k a month, some all the way up to thirty k a month, writing for people online without a college degree. Not only will you have direct access to me and my coaches, but you'll also be connected with people in my network to land your first copywriting gig once you've trained up in the group. And if this sounds like it'd be helpful to you, I'll just leave a little link in the description for you. All right, go check that out. So tell me kind of like the difference between, obviously like financially as well, but like maybe just the way that you think about copywriting or the way that you were like doing business like before and like after of like hopping. Yeah. Because you've been, like you're one of our, you're one of the stars. You're one of the superstars. Dude, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Just vibes. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the real story is like, okay, as soon as I quit my job or like right before I quit my job, I was like, I'm gonna be a copywriter. Like I just said it, like I'm a copywriter. And then like divine intervention, my roommate gets a call from like a buddy of his that runs a print shop here in Austin. And he's like, yo, can you help me pass out flyers? I'm trying to do marketing. And I was like, yo, you need marketing. I was like, tell him I'm a copywriter. I'll write his emails. And, he was just like, oh, actually, we are looking for an email guy. And, like, instantly, there's, like, okay, like, you can copyright. And I was like, yeah. And then 
just like that, I basically had a client and I was like, I put in my two weeks, I bought like a Clavio course. I just started learning. I was like, yeah, I got this. I can do this. I like, that's when I started learning. I didn't know shit about copywriting. And then right around that time, which I was telling you, I was like buying courses, like getting into it. I, I don't know how I stumbled upon uh, copy MBA. So this is where I'm getting. Cause I, I got copy MBA first, like months before I joined inner circle. Um, mm. and it was like, I had gone to other courses like Flavio stuff, but then I was like, man, I really need to learn this copy stuff. So I ended up getting copy MBA and it really helped me out. There was like, just like a few key ideas in there. Like, especially like how you like structure the e-com emails and like differentiating between brand and all that stuff. Uh, brand and e-com or direct response and brand. I mean, uh, which really helped me out. Mm -hmm. But anyways, fast forward to when I was traveling, I basically had that client uh, the whole time. And I had a few other clients that I was like picking up and like side projects and stuff that I was doing. But I kind of hit like a plateau where I was like, I was sending out outreach and it just wasn't working. And I had hopped on a few sales calls and this was like, man, I just need more like, I just need somebody to tell me what to do which is like inner circle you know what i mean and then somehow that came across i think i was like on the list and i joined and literally i was like i'm in like i just need to do this you know what i mean like i knew that's like the next step because i was hitting like a wall um mm -hmm. and yeah dude after that i mean the connections in there just like the little questions you have that you're dealing with a combo and you just don't know what to say and you can just like get instant feedback on it or like stuff like that is what like really helped me out. And then, yeah, dude, that was basically it. I mean, after that, I want to say I just went ham on, uh, on outreach on DMS. I was doing email before I went ham on DMS. That was like a big thing. And then I ended up landing a client. What's up? It was Griff's DM strategy, right? Yeah, he was like, bro, email's dead. Just go for DMs. I was like, all right, I bet we're doing DMs now. So, um, so yeah, did that. And then I was doing like crazy DM outreach until I finally landed a client. And then honestly, I was like, fuck this. I hate outreach. I'm just going to focus on this one client, new client that I just got doing like as best as I can and just, uh, you know, just performing really well. And I completely stopped doing outreach. I don't think I've done outreach since then, except recently, but it's a little more uh, thoughtful. But I stopped doing outreach. I started focusing on the client. And then I think just with like the connections, I started growing my Twitter more. You guys were like shouting me out on Twitter. And then I basically just get like random inbound leads sometimes now and inner circle threw me a bone. That was cool. Um, so nice. yeah, dude, I mean, it's been great. Like the connections, the homies, it's all there, you know? I mean, yeah, like that's really like the, the thing is, is the, the community yeah. of it and in the network, like you kind of become like, especially because like you're, you're super active on online. And um, me and Ben were, we were like drunk on a plane. I'm pretty sure on the way to yeah. LA and we were like, we were, talking, we were like, we were like, we were like, yeah, man, you're, you're fucking crushing Fuck it. So yeah. I think like that makes it really easy for us to help you because we know that you fucking want to yeah. do it. Um, and like, yeah, man, like there's a, there's a handful of people in there that we will like, we will do whatever for just because we know that you guys are, up there, yeah. you know, and you're you guys obviously. Thanks bro. Um, but I mean, so tell me like, so you're at you're at seventy five ish now. Yeah. Do, like, are you really just optimizing for lifestyle more, or do you like do you want to go big? Like, do you want to hit like twenty three? I do, I do. But the shift I've had is that I don't want to do it by just stacking clients, because it's just like more work. Like, you know, you can optimize, of course, you can get it down. It's like I know you said you hit like forty seven k like at your peak, and you're working like popping freaking. Adderall and just going in. I was like, bro, like, because I am optimizing for lifestyle, like, this, like, that doesn't feel like the right vehicle for me. So, like, right now, I'm just focusing on the clients I have 
and anything else that that wants to come my way. But I'm also working on this like really higher leverage play recently. So yeah, I'm kind of just putting mm-hmm. maintaining the um, clients I have, and then just going in on on this other thing. So. Yeah, man. I mean, like you have a you have a another guy right now that you're talking to. He's like, he he does. We're like, okay. So my model of freelancing works really well to just stack retainers, right? Like if you want yeah. to get you know ten clients for you two yeah. a month, like it's still not that work, and you can yeah. do that and make good money. But with this, like you're kind of going for like a moonshot with every single client, which is interesting. Yeah, and that's only something that like writers can do. Like you have to be pretty talented, which luckily yeah. you are. Uh, so. Um, so that, that's a whole other thing that like, I, I'm excited to see that, that happen. And like, obviously like there's, like I said, there's very few people that can do it. I think you can. What? Um, so, but you, the, the type of copywriting that you're about to do, like the really hardcore direct response, like basically launches, like just going straight high ticket. Yeah. Just stuff yeah. Like it's that. not even that. It's just like uncovering money from people's lists that they haven't been able to get, you know? It's like finding, it's like free yeah. money for people. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. So, it's, it's, yeah. Sick, man. So, so you do want to be in that range of like 20, 30, 40, but just with a few clients. Yeah. Yeah. If I, how about this? I'll ask you if, if I could say by next week, you'll be at 25 grand a month, but you're working 50 hours a week. Would you rather have that or make like 12 grand a month working around what you're, you know, the hours you're working right now. So you can continue to travel and stuff like that. Would you choose? How many hours a week? <laughs> like 10, 12 hours a week, 12 grand oh. a month or 50 hours. Yeah. 50 grand. That's the thing. I just, I'm, I'm all about leverage. So if it's like, like copywriting the freelance model you're still trading your time is worth more and your skills are worth more for sure but you're still you're still trading you know what i mean it's like this for this mm-hmm. and so if i can be working 50 hours a week but i'm working on super high leverage plays where i'm making like 100 you know like 200k a month somehow like if i'm you know whatever but that's the move for sure so like, i don't mind working more but like, if it just feels like I'm just kind of like in this like, r- like rat race of like trading time for money, then like, that's not where I want to be. So ideally, yeah, what you're saying, like if I can just be making 12 grand a month working what I'm doing now, and then I can be using my other time to like, like I, I'm, I've been ever since we had that TikTok call, I've been like making TikToks and stuff. Like I'm thinking about other shit too. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't want to yeah, be yeah. stuck in this just like freelancer model, even though it's like. I could see the path here, but it's like, what vehicle do I want to get in? You know? Yeah. yeah. And dude, that's, I'm, you're coming to that realization now because everyone yeah. gets there where it's like, you can make solid money. Freelancer. Yeah. But the point is to make a hundred K freelancer. Like it's just too, like it's too yeah. hard. You want to use the knowledge that exactly. you're getting as a freelancer, apply it to something else that can get you up there without having to work that much. Yeah. Like, a brand or some sort of thing that you can put your name yeah. on where it's more leverage. But like, dude, I mean, like you probably agree, like for, for what you do, like for 7,500 bucks a month, whatever, 10 grand a month, like to, to like the work you're doing is like fun, it's yeah. easy, it's pretty, not super challenging. Yeah. Um, man, I think that's sick. And I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on you. Fuck like, yeah. dude, obviously like inner circle is fun for life. Like, Hell yeah. You know, man, you're gonna be in there, you know, in three years when when you're, you know, a millionaire, which is, is kind of yeah, back um, dude. But I mean, last question: um, What would you say to someone who's like, kind of on the fence on Inner Circle? Like, is there anything that you would tell, like, basically tell yourself if you have like, you know, hesitations? Or I mean, if you're on the fence and you feel like it'll help you even if, if you have a small punch that like this is the thing that you need to do then you literally have nothing to lose because it definitely will help you there's always at least one or two things that you can pick up that will literally change 
like the course of your life. You know what I mean? Even if it's like indirectly, like even just meeting you, you know, super dope. This could literally change my life. Just being like, just knowing who you are and like, like us knowing each other. And like, that would have never even been like the thing, a thing if I never joined or like, even just like the little nuggets, like you just never know how like things domino, you know? But if you don't, if you're not willing to take that step, then you just never find out. And then you always be like, man, like, I wonder what would happen if I did that. And you just never know. Yeah, I love that. I think, yeah, like that's, that's what I love about you is you have a really interesting perspective on that kind of stuff. Like, and, and who was that? Oh, it was, uh, it was one of my friends in sales, Julian. Um, or you know, Julian. Um, yeah, the but, guy that, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, dude, like he's obviously killing it. Like all, all my boys who are killing it were kind of like, like, dude, I was like kind of like a serial core fire when I started to, like, I bought like a bunch of like little, like 50 to a hundred dollar little courses. Yeah. Like I just collect it. Like my, like my gum road account has probably has like 20. <laughs> nice. Like, dude, and, and you're the same way where it's just like you, you value information yeah. and like, I don't know. I, I think, I think that's dope. So yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm happy you're in. I think you're fucking ripping. And like the fact that you're only 11 months in is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like it's going to be cool to see where you're at in another year because that shit compacts. Yeah. Like the shit you learn. Literally. It's not going to take you another year to get to Yeah. Months. No way. By that time, it's going to fucking compact. Yeah. That's true. I'm, I'm calling now that you'll, you'll be at 100K a month by the end of 2023. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. That's the plan. Where can people hit you up, bro? You like Twitter, right? Yeah, Twitter. Uh, I'm on Twitter for sure. And yeah. Is that, is that where you want people to find you? Yeah. Yeah, Twitter. I'm on TikTok now too. What's your, what's your handles? Uh, Twitter is Lucky Roll Mao. And then TikTok is Mao Andres underscore. Probably make uh, this the same. Dude, thanks. I appreciate yeah, it. bro. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks for everything. And hopefully we can make, make us more money.